Hey guys and welcome back to Tots Plus. So in the next hour or so we'll go ahead and finish up the case by creating this um, bottom piece and then we're gonna create some renders in Keyshot. So instead of creating all the interior parts or some of the interior of the case we'll see how Keyshot creates my scenes and how we can create fairly realistic renders or quite nice renders inside the key shot with a couple of settings so last time we left off with this piece um, we modeled the USB holes and as you can see I fit them in I also done this one in the firewire and what you haven't seen that I've done is I just added this jack um, it's basically just a cylinder with a little bit of an extrusion and there's the firewire and for the firewire I didn't really bother uh, remodeling exactly the firewire port I just used the USB and I scaled it down and I also went ahead and added this little um, light bulb which is basically just an LED and I just done that by creating a sphere cutting it in half and then scaling it down so you can go ahead and give this a glass shader inside Keyshot as well other than that I've done a couple of tweaks on top of the case here uh, just with this part here so it follows this curve with the outer edge and also in ahead and a fixed issue that we had around here with the uh, mesh not lining up with the case okay so that's about it that I've done uh, for final tweaks for now and now we're just going to go ahead and create this um, inner piece here that uh, shouldn't be too complicated so let's select this one and that one and I think that's all we need. So select both of those and then isolate. And we just want to go and create a piece in between here. And it's actually a separate piece. So these two are not actually connected. So the way we're going to go and do that is we'll break the faces off here. And then we'll just go ahead and extrude that like we done this technique quite a few times before. I'll also duplicate this first and move it so that I don't have to go back and insert edge loops back in again. I can just go and delete these ones. So I'm just going to select edge mode and start deleting these supporting edges that I don't need anymore because they would just get in a way uh, to select these faces. Okay, delete that. And we also need to delete this supporting edge that goes around here and there we go delete and we can now delete that one as well okay cool so now let's just select all these faces that we need selected anything else so we're just going to select all of these faces and then duplicate it and then extrude it to create us that bridge in between these two pieces so I'm going to go to edit mesh and make sure that on my polygons tab and then find duplicate face and then I'll also go to edit the little by type history and select that piece if you can't find it we can go to our outliner and if you can't see the button for it down here you can go to window and then outliner and it should pop up as a separate window and just for the sake of not um, wasting more screen space we're going to move that to my other screen so now I'm just going to find in my outliner the piece that I want to select which is this one okay and I'm gonna move it where I need it and I'll just go to modify center pivot zoom in and we should be able to um, snap this as well so I'm gonna press insert and move my pivot to the center of that and now if I turn on wireframe unshaded and select and snap exactly to the right place and for some reason 
Oh, uh, that must be because it's not smoothed yet, I think. Actually, I snapped it to the wrong one. So it should be that one, I think. Let's just see. For some reason, this one seems to be a little bit bigger. And that's because it's smoothed. It should be fine. So now what we're going to do is just select the mesh and then go to Edit Mesh Extrude and just drag this out. Like so, and again, I'm gonna go ahead and unsmooth this one. Or oh, before, let's just go ahead and snap this. So I'm gonna select that axis, hold down V, and just snap it there. Okay. So now we have the bridging piece, and now we just need to add in the supporting edges that we need. So I'm gonna isolate this piece. Okay, so once that's isolated, I'm just going to add in the supporting edges that I need with the insert edge loop tool. And I'm going to add quite a few here. I'll add the double here and same on the other side. Also need one around there and also on this side. Now let's add them here as well and here. Okay, and I should have gone through all the way. And let me just check the other end. So I'm going to have two here as well. And to break this long face up, I'm just going to go to my Edit Mesh Insert Edge Loop tool with the box next to it. And let me just make this a little bit smaller. And then go to Multiple Edge Loops, and I'm going to add probably about four maybe across there just to um, break this up a little bit and we can also space these out a little bit more okay cool so let's turn off our wireframe on shaded view and uh, let's move this come out of isolate and just isolate these three Make sure that everything is smoothed. Okay, and then we can check how these guys are fitting together. It fits together quite nicely. The next one I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna scale this down a tiny bit. So if I go to modify center pivot to make sure that the pivot is in the center. And then on the Z, I'm just gonna scale it down a tiny, tiny bit. Probably like not point not not. Oops, not point nine 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 just to um, make this gap in between here a little bit bigger. So in case that's seen, it's easy to tell that these are actually separate pieces. Okay, cool. So pretty much now that we've finished the case, we can delete that piece. So now that the outside is finished, instead, like I said, of going in the inside part and blocking out the major pieces in here. Uh, we're going to go and see how to render this uh, case inside Keyshot. So the first thing that I'm going to go through is how to prepare our scene uh, before we bring it into Keyshot. So what I want you guys to do before the next part is that if your outliner is messy like mine, um, then make sure that you go ahead and name each uh, single piece correctly and make sure that nothing is in groups um, for now or you can put things in groups but you'll see in the next part we're going to go through a different a uh, couple of different ways of uh, preparing these objects so i'll see you guys in the next part